Good evening, and welcome to part one of Noble High School's Academic Achievement Night and Scholarship Award Ceremony. I'm Joe Finley, Principal of Noble High School, and before we start, I'd like to thank uh, all the parents out there who have supported these outstanding students over the years, all the way from kindergarten to high school. You've done a remarkable job with these students. I'd also like to thank the guidance department for uh, putting this program together today, and to all the student uh, teachers who volunteered their time to come here and present tonight, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Mr. Eaton up there in the booth who uh, prepared the room for us today. Thank you, Mr. Eaton. The students we're um, recognizing tonight are really, really are outstanding students. Not only are they great academic achievers, they're hard workers and they've been able to manage their learning in a very, very difficult environment this year. So congratulations to every one of the students here tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce Nancy Samard, the Director of School Counseling, who will be making some special awards. Nancy? Thank you, Mr. Finley. We are going to begin this evening with National Merit Commended Students and our National Merit Finalist Student. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for the recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. Approximately 1.5 million high school students enter the program each year by taking the PSAT in their junior year of high school. In late September, more than two-thirds, about 34,000 of the approximately 50,000 high scorers on the PSAT receive letters of commendation in recognition of their outstanding academic promise. This year, Rain Bogato, who's a House 2 student, but I thought this was important enough to mention here too, was recognized as a commended student. So let's give her a round of applause because she deserves that. In early September, about 16,000 students, or approximately one-third of the 50,000 high scorers, are notified that they have qualified as semifinalists. Semifinalists are the highest scoring entrants in each state and must complete a rigorous application process to be considered as a finalist. In February, some 15,000 semifinalists are notified that they have advanced to the finalist standing. This year, Lucas Bent received notification that he was a National Merit Finalist, and he's waiting to hear if he was selected as a scholarship winner. Lucas, I have a certificate of merit for you that you can come get now, or we can do it in the second round when we're doing house two. Or you can just stand and we can all clap for you. What would you prefer? Where are you, Lucas? Okay. <laughs> Round two, you can come get it, okay? All righty. Okay, now we're going to move right into the recognition of students. Now we're gonna do this a little differently this year because we don't have a lot of room on the stage. Right behind this curtain is a ton of PCP. PCP? PPC. No, no PCP. Um, and so we don't have a whole lot of room up here to have students line up. So what we're going to do is when teachers come up, they're going to read your names. We're going to ask you to stand and remain standing until you, you, they tell you to sit down. So we're going to recognize cum laude students. We're going to recognize magna cum laude students. And we're going to recognize summa cum laude students. Now, a couple of things. We have certificates for all of you, but we're going to get you those next week. And if you are a magna cum laude student or a summa cum laude student, you're not only getting a certificate, but you're also getting a $25 gift card from Amazon. However, apparently the district has changed their practice in terms of how we give these out, and you will have to see Mrs. Murphy in the principal's office and sign a form in order to get your gift card. So just be aware that that's going to be the process, and we'll chase you down next week to make sure all of this happens. If you are an outstanding student, you are also getting a $25 gift card and you will need to see Mrs. Murphy. And if you are the valedictorian or the salutatorian, you're getting a $50 gift card. So all of those will be given from Mrs. Murphy. So it'll be really important that you follow up with her. 
So when we're recognizing large groups of students, we're going to have you stand where you are. However, when we're recognizing outstanding students or just one student, we're going to ask you to come down. And when you come down, you're going to come right up the center stairs here, and then you can come right over and get your award. Does that make sense to everybody? Excellent. So with that, we are going to start with multiple pathways. So I'm going to have Ms. Olivia Moore come up to recognize the multiple pathways students. Good evening. We have one student being recognized with a Latin Honors Distinction of Cum Laude for earning a GPA between 3.0 and 3.59. Alyssa Skeffington, please stand. We will get you a certificate next week. And the next two students, I'm going to read letters. Um, one is from Mr. Sutter, who couldn't be here, to Ms. Jaden Staples. And one is from me to Caleb O'Donnell. And these are outstanding students in MP, the Multiple Pathways program. So I'm going to start with Caleb. Um, Dear Caleb, when the opportunity to write this speech came up in team meeting, I knew I had to volunteer. In this past year, you have been a light of positivity, intellectual curiosity, and uplifting humor in every class I have had with you. Every dull check-in question, you made us laugh, and every independent project, you wowed us with your dedication and focus. Thank you for making this difficult year just a little bit better. I didn't have the gift of knowing you before you joined MP, but what I do know from conversations with you and other teachers is that you have grown immensely to become the young man you are today. A hard-working, kind, hilarious person who we will all miss so much next year. This year in particular, you transformed as a student, recovering two years worth of credits and earning honor roll grades your entire senior year, all while adjusting to the changing norms of living through a pandemic. You completed an advanced senior project on an essential topic exemplifying your commitment to living a healthy and informed life. You have been a positive leader in our community building Multiple Pathways block and an exceptionally, exceptionally kind and supportive friend to so many in the program. It is an honor to present this award to you tonight, just as it has been an honor to know you and work with you the past two years. Thank you for living authentically, with self-awareness and compassion for others, and for demonstrating what it means to never stop striving towards your best self. Caleb O'Donnell. I don't know if you should come up. <laughs> oh, you're being summoned. You have to come up, Caleb. <laughs> Um, no handshake. <laughs> All right, dear Jaden, and these are Mr. Sutter's words, but they um, resonate through all of us on the MP team. I could not be more pleased to celebrate with you not only your early graduation, but also being one of the Multiple Pathways Students of the Year. I understand the intensity of the losses you endured, and I know how those can impact a person. During these past two years, I have watched you develop into a strong-willed, determined individual. You have absorbed and processed those losses without letting them define who you are, and used those experiences to push you ever more to being your best self. Jaden, you are a shining example of what tenacity looks like. You accomplished by persevering through adversity and demanding the same high standards from yourself as you expected from others. You are someone who is able to look at what she wants, figure out what needs to be done to get there, and then follow through to achieve it. Jaden, I am glad to have been able to share in and see you develop your sense of humor, especially your spot on costume of Mr. Sutter on Halloween, your passions, and your love of nature and family. I am so proud of you for what you've achieved, and I look forward to seeing what your gifts, skills, and dedication will bring for you. Jaden Staples. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. And now I'm going to invite up Mr. Rose and Mr. Bragdon for the House One Student Awards.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to start uh, with the uh, House One cum laude students, please. The following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.0 to 3.59. Please stand and remain standing while I call the names. Oliver Allen, Rebecca Brooks, Molly Burns, McKenna Cameron, Stella Carpenter Parsley, Haley Christensen, Maya Clark, Emma Cole, Riley Comiskey, Matthew Douglas, Kyle Druge, Madison Glay, Matthew Gould, Kara Gregoire, Liam Hooper, Cody Hussey, Timothy Lassard, William Mallett, Gregory Marzoli, Lucas Monroe, Aileen Mutagoma, Cole Nevison, William Parody, Juliana Rodriguez, Reese Rogers, Cameron Rose, Nicholas Shapley, Ella Shennett, Mackenzie Slater, Haley Smart, Tiana Valley, Danny Watkins, and Xander Woodward. Congratulations. You may be seated. Oops. The following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Magna Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.6 to 3.89. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Owen Arsenault. Ethan Bent. Emma Chase. Danielle Ford. Isabella Hagginson. Sarah Lawrence. Kaylee Mayotte. Abigail Moore, Conrad Nicely, Natalie Randall, Hattie Staples, Summer Starrett, and Anise Study. Congratulations. <laughs> now the following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Summa Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.9 or higher. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Aliyah Blaisdell. Jordan Collins. Genevieve Roy. Lucas Safford. Demetrios Zumbinikis. Hannah Warren. Congratulations. And now we have the Outstanding Student Awards for House One. And I'm gonna to have to beg your pardon as I have to pull mine up on the computer because of printer issues this afternoon. Those of you who are my students know that tech issues and Mr. Rose go hand in hand. So, so. There we go. All right, good evening students, moms, dads, guardians, and fellow staff. My name is Jim Rose and I am the House One Senior Physics Teacher here at Noble High School. I have been asked to present one of our outstanding seniors for this evening and it is my genuine pleasure to speak on behalf of Jordan Collins. Jordan has maintained a GPA in excess of 4.0, which includes many AP courses on her transcript. She has placed with highest honors every semester of her high school career and is a member of both the Spanish National Honor Society and the National Honor Society. She is the recipient of the Americanism Award and the Clarkson Academic Achievement Award. Outside of school, she has been very involved with her pursuit of dance, tallying 15 years of dedicated practice and performance with dances of all styles. 
Jordan has hosted benefits to raise money for charities, and even before the pandemic altered our activities last spring, she was already on the threshold of reaching the required number of community service hours for graduation as a junior. Through my personal con interactions with Jordan, I can unequivocally state that she displays a positive and friendly demeanor at all times. She possesses a genuine can-do attitude and does not waste time complaining. She just gets it done. I have no doubt she will walk across the stage like this four years from now, having earned more success at the college level. I emphasize the word earn, as Jordan realizes the value of working for a goal, and she is not shy about putting in the effort needed to achieve what she aspires to. Among many qualified students, I am delighted to announce and congratulate Jordan Collins as a House One Outstanding Senior Student for 2021. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chuck Bragdon and I'm a history teacher on House One and tonight it is my pleasure and honor to present this year's House One Outstanding Student Award. This student has demonstrated amazing skills and a strong desire to learn over this past year. Besides his academic achievements, I will tell you that you will not meet a better person. This year I reached out to some of the students' other teachers to gain some insight and this is what I got from some of his other teachers. Mr. Brennan from AP Physics said, it is one of my best students ever in AP. Madame Osborne said that this student's intelligence, great wit, natural leadership skills, academic passion, integrity, maturity have always stood out and is undoubtedly one of the most outstanding students I have taught. Ms. Newhouse of AP Lit said it was clearly one of her stars this year. All of these teachers confirmed what I already knew, that this student really was outstanding. And I also have a strong sense that whatever this student does after high school, this person is gonna be a tremendous success. So let me present this year's House One, uh, House One Outstanding Student Award to Luke, Lucas Safford. Thank you, Mr. Rose and Mr. Bragdon. And now, we are on to announcing the salutatorian of the class of 2021. So I'm pleased to bring up Ms. Adina Hunter. Hello, everyone. I'm Adina Hunter, the, the, the District Excel Director, and I'm absolutely delighted to be introducing Lucas Bent this evening. I first had Lucas as a student in my freshman humanities class. He was quiet initially, but I knew from his writing that he was wise beyond his years, with deep insights into the world around him. Even as a freshman, he had an insatiable desire to go above and beyond, to challenge and extend himself. Frankly, if I could bottle all the qualities of a great student into one package, it would be Lucas. He is the student every educator dreams of having. Truly gifted, a strong work ethic, punctual, kind and compassionate to fellow peers, and appreciative and polite to adults. Not many students have taught or all these traits combined, but this is Lucas. He excels at everything he touches, whether it is academic, musical, or mechanical. He can build you a website, write you a poem, make documentaries, play a song for you on his trumpet, or defend the pros and cons of an argument. He is also Noble's first National Merit semifinalist in six years, an honor bestowed to just the top 0.5% of students in each state. 
While these examples are testament to his talents, I would like to portray the strength and quality of Lucas's character. He is an amazing person, reliably selfish, selfless, has a strong sense of justice, and wants to do what is right, even if it might not always benefit himself. He is always willing to lend a hand no matter the situation. Last year, upon telling him of a brilliant but behaviorally challenged elementary student in need of a positive role model, Lucas stepped up to mentor the student in computer coding. They began to meet weekly, and right from the start, I knew it was the perfect match. As challenging as the student can be, the way Lucas works with this twice exceptional student is heartwarming. He is patient, redirects as needed, and is the highlight of this student's week at school. Fast forward two years and they're still meeting weekly, and although Lucas doesn't see being an educator as a career choice in his future, he has the heart and soul of a teacher. According to this young student, Lucas is helpful, really kind, smart, and wonderful. Lucas's elementary school teacher, uh, Ms. Sahagian, describes him as calming, respectful of people, giving of his time, especially in a crazy senior year with so many demands, and has a wonderful laugh. She says, Lucas has done so much for this student. Knowing that the mentor session was coming motivated the student to hang in there. Lucas really saved the student this year. And I couldn't agree more. Your mentorship of the student is a true reflection of your character. I have absolutely no doubts, Lucas, that you will continue to positively influence those around you in the future, weaving yourself into the fabric of every community in which you find yourself. Congratulations again, Lucas, and best of luck and success in the future. Please join me now in introducing Lucas Bent as your Class of 2021 Salutatorian. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. And now it is time to bring up Ms. Sophie Larson, who will be introducing the valedictorian of the class of 2021. Hello there. I'm Sophie Larson, French and Latin teacher here, and I'm pleased to introduce our valedictorian, Genevieve Roy. I met Genevieve in French where I saw a brave student who dares to make errors in order to learn. And beyond an excellent ethic, Genevieve impresses with a fun, loving, and kind spirit. And a close group of friends. Genevieve and her community have spent many quiet and not so quiet lunches in my room. Um, Genevieve has a gift with languages. She's completed French 5, French mentoring, two years of Latin. She's volunteered countless hours through the French Honor Society as well. She'll be going to BU. I'm sure she'll have a wonderful time there. But I don't want to talk to you about Genevieve the academic. Your grades don't define you. They just bespeak your academic success. I want to talk to you about Genevieve the person because Genevieve is a lot more than her excellent grades. Genevieve is a quiet leader, and I mean that Genevieve doesn't exhort or push or pull. She just moves with dedication, and therefore others join her. That is quietly leading. For example, she's ambitious but not competitive, so she enjoys beating herself but not so much besting her peers. However, if you compete with Genevieve, you contend with her exceptional skill. In Latin, quisa vincit, vincit, she who wins over herself wins. And Genevieve is not competitive, but she often makes this proverb true. Another thing about Genevieve is this, she moves with intention and she knows herself well. Last year, she would often come to my room after school to complete work over there, because she knew if she went home, she would get distracted and not focus. Um, that is knowing yourself and intentionally setting yourself up for success. It was lucky for me because I needed to spend a fair amount of time here at school as well. Misery works. Misery loves company, so we worked well together. Um, I also want you to know that Genevieve's creates, Genevieve creates community around her. And importantly for that, Genevieve is a listener. There's often more taking in than talking. So with verbal support or quiet company, Genevieve shows through action her care and love for those in her community. It was beautiful to see Genevieve and her crew support and make space for each other during lunches last year. 
Um, and at the end of my first challenging year of teaching, Genevieve and her friends brought me a basket of gifts with like chocolates and a stuffed bunny and stuff. And um, Genevieve said, the most important ingredient is invisible. We put love in there. So I said that Genevieve has a gift with language. And as you see, it's not just grammar. She knows what to say and when to speak and when to listen. But I also mean that she is open and honest with herself and her friends. I feel great admiration when I think of the times that Genevieve has spoken up in fierce support of her friends or expressing deeply held beliefs, even when those differ from the beliefs of those around her. Applying to anything from whether or not you stir yogurt before you eat it, I'm not sure we'll ever see eye to eye on this one, or whether there's a natural hierarchy amongst the creatures on Earth and where we belong in it, if there is one. But lastly, I don't want you to think that all Genevieve has is a serious philosophical language side. There's also fun and mischief. A few weeks ago, we were discussing in class which Roman weapons are best. And Genevieve said, and she's not wrong, of course, that we shouldn't fight in the first place. So I suggested that for her, perhaps the pen would be mightier than the sword because we were working on comparatives. Genevieve hesitated, and then this nicely describes Genevieve. She said, yeah, but then there's throwing stars. So if anyone can successfully wield a pen against a sword, I'm sure it will be Genevieve, but yet, careful of those throwing stars. It's my honor to introduce to you Genevieve Roy, valedictorian of our 2021 class. Congratulations, Genevieve. I'm proud of you. Alrighty, thank you, Ms. Larson, and congratulations to all of you students. This is normally where we would end our night. However, nothing is the way it normally is this year, so we're combining this night with class day and giving out scholarships as well. So right now, we're going to shift gears and go to scholarships and awards. So. I need to tell you that we're giving nearly $40,000 of scholarships away tonight to students. And there are still some that are out there. We don't know who our Mitchell Scholar is yet, so there's, there will still be more money coming in. We just didn't get it in time. So when we do get it, we will get that to the appropriate student. So what I'm going to tell you is what you're going to get from, from the counselors tonight and from the presenters. Um, it may be a letter that has information about how to get your money. It may actually be a check that has the money. So don't lose it. If you get it, everything's in a nice envelope. So it, I think it'll be fairly easy for you to be able to keep it. Um, but we have some awards, but if you're getting money or a letter that tells you about how to get money, make sure you hold on to it. In the event that you lose the letter, Ms. Hyatt in the guidance office can print you another one. In the event that you lose the check, I don't have an answer for you. We, we can't print another one of those. So be very, very careful if you have checks. So our first award tonight is the American Legion Good Citizenship Awards. And these are very fancy awards. You get a nice medal. And you get this lovely award, which reads, this particular student of Noble High School in recognition of the accomplishment attained as a winner of the American Legion Citizenship Award and in further recognition of the possession of those high qualities of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service necessary to the preservation and protection of the fundamental institutions of our nation and the advancement of society. Whew. So we have three of those to give out. They are going to Genevieve Roy, Lucas Safford, and Hannah Warren. And since there's only three of you, come on down.
Next, I'm going to bring up Mr. Parr and Ms. Guzman Rothwell to give out the SEAL Awards. Good evening, uh, I'm David Parr, this is Irene Guzman Rothwell, and we're here to present uh, to students who've earned the designation of uh, the SEAL uh, honorific for our high school. Uh, SEAL stands for Social Studies, English, uh, Arts, and Languages. And basically the SEAL uh, program gives students a chance to focus their schooling throughout high school. Uh, in one of their, those areas. It gives students uh, voice and control over what they want their high school experience to be. And it also requires that they undertake some uh, rigorous uh, electives, maintain uh, high grades, and uh, really showcase their interest by going outside the school to pursue their interests in their particular area. Uh, tonight we are presenting several SEAL awards. Uh, the first we're pleased to present to Oliver Allen. Right Next we have Stella Carpenter Parshley. <laughs> Genevieve Roy. Demetrius Zumbanakas. I did it wrong again, didn't I? Zumbanikas. Zumbanikas. Is that it for tonight? Thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you, SEAL folks. Next, we have our STEM Endorsement Awards with Mr. Adam Reed. Good evening, I'm Adam Reed, a science teacher here at Noble High School, and I would like to recognize the following students for the outstanding work that they have done in the field of science, technology, engineering, and math. Owen Arsenal. <laughs> Aaliyah Blaisdell. Liam Hooper. <laughs> Lucas Monroe. Genevieve Roy. <laughs> Lucas Safford.
Thank you, Mr. Reed, and congratulations to all of you STEM endorsement recipients. Next, Ms. Irene Guzman Rothwell and Ms. Rosanna Pass are coming up to present a special bilingual award. Bilingual award. The main seal of biliteracy is an award that recognizes student achievement in language learning. Students who are proficient in English and an additional language may earn the seal of biliteracy by demonstrating their proficiency in the second language through the four modalities of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. The student who today receives this award started taking Spanish in eighth grade and not only continued learning Spanish for five years, but also accomplished four years of French and two years of Latin. Next year, he will continue to explore his passion for languages at Merrimack College by majoring in world language and culture studies. We are so proud to present the main seal of biliteracy award to Dimitri Zumbanikas. <laughs> breaking the rules, breaking the rules. Okay. Each year, the President of the United States recognizes all students who graduate with a GPA of 3.5 or higher and they send out this Presidential Education Award. So, first of all, I'm gonna read the letter, and then I'm going to recognize students who have that GPA. Now, if you don't hear your name, don't panic, because if you're getting other scholarships, we lumped the Presidential Education Award in with that. Um, so, students who have a 3.5 GPA or higher are going to be getting this particular award. So, from President Biden, the letter says, Dear Nancy, no, just kidding, doesn't say that. Um, the letter says, Congratulations on receiving the 2021 President's Education Award. America is a country where we are one and unite through tough times. You are the future leaders of this great nation, and through your determination and resilience to push forward, you have reached this ultimate accomplishment of being recognized for this prestigious award. Dr. Biden and I are pleased to congratulate you on receiving the 2021 President's Education Award. We are honored to join your family, friends, school, and community in celebrating your wonderful achievement. Jill and I send our best wishes and blessings. Keep challenging yourselves, be kind, and while we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, be sure to wear a mask. Signed, Joe Biden. So, these students, you may stand, and we will get these certificates out to you next week. So if, if I say your name, please stand and remain standing. Oliver Allen, Owen Arsenault, Ethan Bent, Aaliyah Blaisdell, Rebecca Brooks, Emma Chase, Maya Clark, Jordan, Jordan Collins, Kyle Druge, Danielle Ford, Madison Glay, Isabella Hagenson, Sarah Lawrence, Kaylee Mayotte, Lucas Monroe, Abigail Moore, Conrad Nicely, Natalie Randall, Genevieve Roy, Lucas Safford, Hattie Staples, Summer Starrett, Anise Studi, Demetrius Tsumbanikis, Ah, we practiced today. And Hannah Warren. Congratulations to all of you for earning a GPA of 3.5 or higher. And at this time, I'm going to have Ms. Tyler and Mr. Kelsey come forward so they can present you 
with some more scholarships. And this is the stuff you really want to hold on to because you're going to have checks and important information. All right, the first student I would like to call down is Ethan Bent. So Ethan is receiving the Presidential Education Award and the $500 Elliott G. Gray Family Scholarship. He will be attending the University of Southern Maine in the fall. Jordan Collins. So Jordan is receiving a Presidential Education Award. Bear with me on this one. She's also receiving a $300 scholarship from the Charles S. Hatch Unit 79 of Berwick and Quint Cheney Unit 87 of North Berwick American Legion Auxiliary's Outstanding Girls Citizenship Award. Uh, $1,000 Joe Chandler Memorial Scholarship and a $100 Richard Ronkel Memorial Scholarship and a $500 Sanford Kiwanis Scholarship. <laughs> and Isabella Hagginson, I don't believe she's here. Oh, she's here now. So Isabella is receiving a Presidential Education Award, $250 Berwick Youth Scholarship Association, and she is attending the University of New England in the fall. The first student I'd like to call up is Kaylee Mayotte. She is receiving the Presidential Education Award, the Dorcas Society of Lebanon Scholarship for $500, the Kelly A. Bourbon Memorial Scholarship for $3,000, the Lawrence Edward Willie Memorial Scholarship for $1,000, the Mark Precourt Memorial Scholarship for $500, the Moore Memorial Scholarship Fund for $100, the Noble 50 Plus Club Scholarship for $100, and the Partners Bank Scholarship for $1,000, the West Lebanon Ladies Circle Scholarship for $500. Wow. <clears throat> the next student I'd like to call up is Abigail Moore. She is receiving the Presidential Education Award, the Lori A. Guptill Art Scholarship for $1,000, and the Marie E. Dutch Memorial Scholarship for $300. And she'll be attending Southern Maine Community College next year. <laughs> now I'd like to call up Conrad Nicely. He is receiving the Presidential Education Award, the Altruza International Inc. of Sanford Springville Scholarship for $150, and the Dorothy M. Crane Memorial Scholarship for $200. And he will be attending Husson University next year. Now I'd like to call up Reese Rogers, who will receive the Donald R. Folsom Scholarship Fund for $500, and she'll be attending York County Community College next year. Now I'd like to call up Genevieve Roy, who's receiving the Presidential Education Award and the Noble High School French Honor Society Scholarship for $150. She'll be attending Boston University. And finally, I'd like to call up Haley Smart. 
She is receiving the Dr. William E. Lytle and Carolyn B. Lytle Memorial Scholarship for $3,000, and she'll be attending the University of Southern Maine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelsey and Ms. Tyler. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes round one of Academic Achievement Night slash Scholarship Awards. Thank you all for coming. And house two, oh, the presentation is gonna start at seven o'clock, so you all can head on home. Thank you so much for coming. Congratulations to all of you. Good evening and welcome to part two of Noel High School's 2001 Academic Achievement and Scholarship Award Night. This is the time when we uh, recognize some of our highest performing students throughout the course of four years at Noble High School. Uh, this year has been particularly difficult and the, the students we're about to recognize continue to ma uh, maintain extremely high standards in spite of the pandemic, so I congratulate you all. Uh, before we start, I'd like to thank all of our teachers who came tonight to volunteer their time, as well as the guidance counselors who have volunteered their time tonight. And I would like to thank the guidance department for putting together this event. And the guidance department director, Nancy Samard, will now give some special awards. Thank you, Mr. Finley. So we are going to begin this evening by recognizing our National Merit Commended Student and our National Merit Finalist. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. Approximately 1.5 million high school students enter the program each year by taking the PSAT in their junior year of high school. In late September, more than two-thirds, about 34,000 of the approximately 50,000 high scorers on the PSAT received letters of commendation and recognition of their outstanding academic progress. This year, Rain Bugado was recognized as a commended student. Rain, are you here? You want to stand up? Congratulations, that's a pretty great achievement. In early September, about 16,000 students, or approximately one-third of the 50,000 high scorers, are notified that they have qualified as semifinalists. Semifinalists are the highest scoring entrants in each state and must complete a rigorous application process to be considered as a finalist. In February, some 15,000 semifinalists are notified that they have advanced to finalist standing. This year, 
Lucas Bent received notification that he was a National Merit Finalist, and we're still waiting to hear if he's a scholarship winner. So Lucas, come on down. I have a certificate of merit for you. And now we will move on to the recognition of students by the House Two teachers. So let me just explain to you how we're going to do this. If everything's a little bit different because of COVID. Normally, we would have you walk up on stage, but because there's a lot of you and we don't have a whole lot of space, um, we're just going to have you stand and remain standing when teachers call your name. We have certificates for all of you that we will be getting to you within the next week. If you are a magna cum laude or a summa cum laude student, in addition to your certificate, you will also be receiving a $25 gift card from Amazon. However, in order to achieve, in order to get that, you, you have to go see Mrs. Murphy and sign off for it. Apparently there's a whole new central office protocol that we have to follow. So Mrs. Murphy is the principal's office secretary, so you will just need to go up there and sign off with her. Additionally, if you are selected as an outstanding student, you will be asked to come down and you will get your certificate, but you also will get a $25 gift certificate to Amazon that you will have to sign off with Mrs. Murphy to receive. And finally, if you are the valedictorian or the salutatorian, you are receiving a $50 Amazon gift card. But again, you got to go sign the paperwork with Ms. Murphy. So that's going to be the process for this evening. We're going to be standing in place unless you are one, you know, one single student receiving an award and you come on down. And we will tell you when to come down. Um, in terms of the rest of you, we will get the materials out to you within the next week. When you do come down, please just use this staircase right in the middle here and come right over here to the podium and get your award. Does that make sense to everybody? Excellent. And so with that, I'm going to bring up Ms. Ingrid Strange and Ms. Mary McAuliffe for giving the House two student awards. I feel like I was here two weeks ago. <laughs> All right, so the following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.0 to 3.59. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. We have certificates that we will be distributing to you next week, as you were just told. Leah Brewington. Evan Burton. Deja Casey. Dominic Cucinar. Sarah Dyer. Victoria Tori Excel. Tanner Fector. Quinn Flanagan, Cambry Gilpatrick, Avian Griffin, Jay Lee Ireland Cole, Alexander Johnson, Jacob Capley, Christopher Topher Leone. James Libby, Nina Lynn, Jamie Marquis, Wallace Morton, Paul Newen, <laughs> Kelton Smith, Casey Yurick, Aiden Walker, and Amelia Weatherby. Congratulations, you all may be seated.
The following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Magna Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.6 to 3.89. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Katie A.M. <laughs> Abigail Albert. <laughs> Kalyan Keschel. <laughs> Caitlin Clapper. <laughs> Kira Franey. <laughs> Jamie George. <laughs> Kelsey Libby. Emily Lowry, Emma McLaughlin, Harley Pepin, and Riley Pomerlo. Congratulations, you may all be seated. And lastly, the following students are being recognized with the Latin Honors Distinction of Summa Cum Laude for earning a GPA of 3.9 or higher. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Lucas Bent. Rain Bugato. Jacob Hamill. Jacqueline McAvoy. Ryan Mentor, <laughs> Megan O'Connor, <laughs> Josephine Stapleton, <laughs> and Corey Yurick. <laughs> Congratulations, you may all be seated. Got too many pieces of paper, sorry. So I'm back, um, and I am going to congratulate the Senior House Two Academic Student of the Year Award for the first student, there are two, and the first one's gonna go to Josephine Stapleton. <laughs> Josephine Stapleton. I'm gonna read a little speech and I'm gonna have you come up. Um, House Two instructors have chosen Josephine Stapleton as one of the recipients of the Academic Student of the Year Award. This young woman was never chosen as a Student of the Month for the House Two Senior Pod, but was on the top of our list since September. In her case, we saved the best for last and the biggest recognition. Josie is an outstanding student whose work habits are beyond reproach, and the work submitted is college level. There is no doubt that she will distinguish herself in academia. Every year, she has taken on the challenge of honors work in her classes, along with four AP courses in statistics, English language and composition, world history, and calculus. She excelled across the board and maintained a high GPA of over 4.0. In the middle of her senior year, which has been, of course, driven by the pandemic procedures and remote teaching, Josie's family moved to Massachusetts because of a business opportunity. Josie never missed a beat in her remote learning. I have been privileged to have her as a student in my English 12 class and as a president in the National Honor Society, which I advise. I was extremely impressed with her writing and with her willingness to help out with the different National Honor Society projects that we were able to accomplish during COVID. But those are minor in comparison to the service trips Josie has gone on with an organization that works in Africa, helping to educate its people on how to eradicate a parasite that infects and cripples their feet, thus the name Soul Hope. Her experiences there are documented in her college essay. And one of the many insights that Josie expressed in her essay states, Although Uganda is severely impoverished and scarce of resources, they are anything but in need. Miriam, the medical staff she worked with, showed me that the love, strength, and passion found within their community are far more valuable than anything I could offer. Josie shared information about Soul Hope with the National Honor Society, and a few of the students based their service projects on raising awareness of soul hope and the need for shoes in Uganda. 
Former teachers Ms. Jennings and Madam Croston have also noted the hard work, kindness, and support that Josie demonstrates in her classes at Noble. Ms. Vakalis observed, Josie has a natural knack for getting along with all kinds of people. She will step up to help someone that she sees struggling whether she knows them or not. She is very personable and other students become comfortable with her quite quickly. Mr. Fornoff contributed that Josie analyzes math problems like life problems and morphs them into realistic scenarios that enable her to understand and put meaning into her life. I think she's one of the amaz most amazing students I have taught. And Ms. Lugier, who has known Josie since eighth grade when she taught Common Core Math 9, shared, we have continuously gotten closer as the years have gone by. My classroom was like a second home to Josie. She spent almost every night time with me, but rarely for extra math help. We would catch up about what was going on in her life, and intermittently she would help the underclassmen with math. Even through socially distanced time, she has stayed connected and is one of those students who I will always fondly remember. Josie has become a beloved friend and one of the most thoughtful students I have ever encountered. There is no one I think deserves this more than Josie, who put it best when I asked her how many times she has won student of the month. And she replied, a handful of times. At the risk of sounding arrogant, I think I've lost count. I want to send her off from high school the same way I send off students for the weekend. Be smart and make good choices. That's all from Ms. Lugier. <laughs> I am sure that all of her teachers will be happy to know that Josie has been accepted at Westfield State to pursue a degree in math education in order to teach at the high school level. Josie, congratulations on distinguishing yourself as student of the year and on your plans for the future. Come on. now going to uh, present the award for our second outstanding uh, student of the year. So at the end of my speech, if that student would please come on up. With the end of a very strange, challenging, and unique year coming to an end, <clears throat> it has become time once again for the House 2 senior teachers to honor two students of the year here tonight. In making this decision, we thought about the usual stuff. Who always gets their homework in on time? Who goes the extra mile in class? Who demonstrates good character and leadership in the classroom? Looking out at those of you who are here tonight, I can tell you, so many of you all do, and you should be proud of that. But in such a difficult year, I started to change my thinking a little bit. Who has made the most of an undoubtedly crummy senior year? Who comes to class eager to learn when it would be a lot easier to give up or to shut down? Whose eagerness to learn reminded me of why I love to teach in a year when teaching didn't exactly feel like teaching. This year, that student was Ryan Wiley. I should note here that I do have a particular affection for this graduating class here uh, because I taught most of you as sophomores when I was just an intern here two years ago. I can specifically recall the rambunctious history class that Ryan was in when I met him, day two, block four. <clears throat> Ryan was new to the district that year, and even though many students in that situation might have opted to lay low, he was never shy. In fact, I vividly remember him and his history class compatriot begging to watch historical films, meaning Pocahontas, uh, and Schoolhouse Rock in class on a regular basis. <clears throat> but I also remember fielding history questions from Ryan often. He wanted to know more, not because it would help his grade or because he wanted to waste time in class. And by the way, yes, we know that sometimes that's why you ask questions. He was simply curious. It's something we could all stand to be reminded of. 
learning for the sake of learning. His other teachers have no noticed this as well. <clears throat> Ms. Warner noted that Ryan is intrinsically motivated and finds learning fun. In chemistry, he was enthusiastic about learning, excited to participate in class, and ready and willing to offer a different perspective on things, rather than just learning the basics he needed to get the grade. When I spoke with Mr. Brennan about Ryan as a student, <clears throat> he mentioned that one of the things he admires most about Ryan is indeed his curiosity. In physics, and I can say the same for my class as well, this manifested in two ways. First, being willing to ask questions about things he wanted to know more about. And second, being willing to share that knowledge and those insights with others, which elevated class discussions and drew other students in. Other teachers also noted that Ryan brings a certain presence to a classroom. Ms. Scribner commented that Ryan genuinely makes the classroom a more enjoyable place for students and staff alike. And Ms. Perkins agreed, saying that Ryan brought such a wonderful brightness to each class. Mr. Davis noted that in Senior Project, Ryan's charisma what was what stood out to him the most, and that that positive energy translated into a really great presentation. In a year of interruptions, disappointments, frustrations, and forced adaptations to a brand new style of teaching and learning, Ryan stepped up to the plate. He continued to be, well, Ryan, endlessly curious, infinitely positive, and always respectful and kind to those around him. In a year when it would have been easier to be anything else, it brought us such joy to see those qualities stick it out to the end. I have no doubt that Ryan will continue to bring light and curiosity to everything that he does after graduation as he forges a new path for himself. Congratulations to Ryan Wiley, one of our House 2 Students of the Year. Thank you, ladies. And now it's time for Adina Hunter to introduce the salutatorian of the class of 2021. I'm getting deja vu. Hello, I'm Adina Hunter, the District Excel Director, and I'm absolutely delighted to be introducing Lucas Bent this evening. I first had Lucas as a student in my freshman humanities class. He was quiet initially, but I knew from his writing that he was wise beyond his years, with deep insights into the world around him. Even as a freshman, he had an insatiable desire to go above and beyond, to challenge and extend himself. Frankly, if I could bottle all the qualities of a great student into one package, it would be Lucas. He is a student every educator dreams of having. Truly gifted, a strong work ethic, punctual, kind and compassionate to fellow peers, and appreciative and polite to adults. Not many students I've taught are all these traits combined, but this is Lucas. He excels at everything he touches, whether it is academic, musical, or mechanical. He can build you a website, write you a poem, make documentaries, play a song for you on his trumpet, or defend the pros and cons of an argument. He is also Noble's first National Merit finalist in six years, an honor bestowed to just the top 0.5% of students in each state. While these examples are testaments to his talents, I would like to portray the strength and quality of Lucas's character. He is an amazing person, reliably selfless, has a strong sense of justice, and wants to do what is right, even if it might not always benefit himself. He is always willing to lend a hand no matter the situation. Last year, upon telling him of a brilliant but behaviorally challenging elementary student in need of a positive role model, Lucas stepped up to mentor the student in computer coding. They began to meet weekly, and right from the start, I knew it was the perfect match. As challenging as the student can be, the way Lucas works with this twice exceptional student is heartwarming. He is patient, redirects as needed, and is the highlight of this student's week at school. 
Fast forward two years and they're still meeting weekly. And although Lucas doesn't see being an educator as a career choice in his future, he has the heart and soul of a teacher. According to this young student, Lucas is helpful, really kind, smart, and wonderful. Lucas's elementary school Excel teacher, Mrs. Sahagian, describes Lucas as calming, respectful of people, giving of his time, especially in a crazy senior year with so many demands, and has a wonderful laugh. She says, Lucas has done so much for this student. Knowing that the mentor session was coming motivated the student to hang in there. Lucas really saved the student this year. And I couldn't agree more. Your mentorship of the student is a true reflection of your character. I have absolutely no doubts, Lucas, that you will continue to positively influence those around you in the future, weaving yourself into the fa fabric of every community in which you find yourself. Congratulations again, Lucas, and best of luck and success in the future. Please join me now in introducing Lucas Bent as your class of 2021 salutatorian. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. And now to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2021 is Ms. Sophie Larson. Hello there. I'm Sophie Larson, French and Latin teacher here, and I'm pleased to introduce our valedictorian, Genevieve Roy. I met Genevieve in French where I saw a brave student who dares to make errors in order to learn. And beyond an excellent ethic, Genevieve impresses with a fun, loving, and kind spirit and a close group of friends. Genevieve and her community have spent many quiet and not so quiet lunches in my room. Genevieve has a gift with languages. She's completed French five, French mentoring, two years of Latin, volunteered countless hours through French Honor Society as well. Genevieve will be going to BU, where I'm sure she will have a wonderful time. But I don't want to talk to you about Genevieve the academic. Your grades don't define you. They just bespeak your academic success. I want to talk to you about Genevieve the person because Genevieve is so much more than her academic success. Genevieve is a quiet leader. And I mean that she doesn't exhort or push or pull. She just moves with dedication. And therefore, others join her. And that is leading quietly. For example, she's ambitious but not competitive, so she enjoys beating herself but is not super motivated by beating her peers. However, if you compete with Genevieve, you contend with her exceptional skill. In Latin, quisa vincit vincit, she who wins over herself wins. So although Genevieve is not competitive, she often makes that proverb true in class. Another thing about Genevieve is this, she moves with intention and she knows herself well. Last year, she would often come to my room after school to complete her work. She knew that if she went home, she would get distracted and not focus as well. That is knowing yourself and setting yourself intentionally up for success. It was lucky for me, I needed to spend quite a bit of time at school as well. Misery loves company, so it worked well for both of us. I also want you to know that Genevieve creates community around her. Importantly for that, Genevieve is a listener. There's often more taking in than talking. And then with verbal support or quiet company, Genevieve shows through action her care and love for those in her community. It was beautiful to see Genevieve and her friends make space for each other at lunches last year and offer support for each other. At the end of my first challenging year of teaching, Genevieve and her friends brought me a basket of gifts. It had like a stuffed bunny and some chocolates and stuff. But Genevieve said the most important part of the gift was invisible. They put love in there. So you see that Genevieve has a gift with language, but not just grammar. She knows what to say, when to speak, and when to listen. But I also mean that Genevieve is honest and open with herself and her friends. I feel great admiration when I think of the many times I've heard Genevieve speak up in fierce support of her friends, or expressing deeply held beliefs even when they differ from those of the people around her. And this applies to anything from whether or not you stir yogurt before eating it, we won't see eye to eye here, um, or whether there's a natural hierarchy amongst the creatures on earth and where we belong in it, if there is. Lastly, I don't want you to think that Genevieve only has this serious, philosophical, language-oriented side that I've described. There's also fun and mischief. Just a few weeks ago, we were discussing which Roman weapons are best. 
And Genevieve said, and she's not wrong of course, that we shouldn't fight. So I suggested that perhaps for her the pen will be mightier than the sword because we were working on comparatives. This describes Genevieve nicely. She hesitated and said, yeah, but then there's throwing stars. So if anyone can successfully wield a pen against a sword, I'm sure it will be Genevieve. Just also beware of those throwing stars. It's my honor to introduce to you Genevieve Roy, our valedictorian of 2021. Congratulations, Genevieve. I'm so proud of you. Please come up here. Thank you, Ms. Larson. So that concludes the academic achievement night portion of our program. And now we're going to shift gears to the class night portion of our program. We're going to give out awards and scholarships. Now, you students who are going to get called down here may get letters, you may get checks, in the letters, it may be information about how you get the check. So it's really important that you hold on to this stuff and you don't lose it, okay? If you lose the letter, we can print you another one. If you lose the check, we cannot print you another check. You would be out of luck. So be very careful with what you get. I know it's nerve wracking to come down here, but hold on with your tight little hands to whatever you get up here. So our first presenter this evening um, is uh, it's the first year that we give out the John W. Sullivan Scholarship and you all know that Mr. Sullivan taught math here for 57 years and we are honored this evening to have his wife Terry and his granddaughter Jordan present the first John W. Sullivan Scholarship in honor of Mr. Sullivan. Come on up ladies. Good evening. Um, I would first like to begin by saying big congratulations to the class of 2021. Um, I know that's a big accomplishment and it's been a rough year for you guys, so um, congratulations. Um, my name is Jordan. I am Mr. Sullivan's oldest grandchild. Um, I remember when I was three years old, um, pulling up to the front entrance of this exact building um, for my grandpa's last day before retirement. But he loved his job so much that he returned to Noble the very next school year. He was never off the clock either. I could call him any time of day or night to ask him for help with my math homework. And he would always answer the phone with open arms and say, all right, George, just let me grab my notepad. And any of you who had him in class probably know exactly which notepad I'm talking about. Um, even after he had thoroughly answered my questions, he would always continue to explain to me why the math works that way and then continue to give me hypothetical questions when all I wanted to do at the time was move on to the next question or the next piece of homework that I had to work on. Um, my point is that he had a passion for teaching and I know he made a big impact on so many people in his career. I know it would have meant so much to him to have a scholarship presented in his name. So without further ado, the first John W. Sullivan Memorial Scholarship is presented to Jamie Marquis. Thank you, Jordan. Next, I'm going to introduce Ms. Ingrid Strange, who will be presenting the Tyler Bisson Scholarship. Hello. Um, this scholarship 
was created by the National Honor Society uh, class of 2020 to honor a member of the 2020 graduating class who unfortunately was not able to graduate with his peers. Tyler Bassam was a bright, dedicated athlete and a student who, as a result of a distracted driver, was involved in a tragic car accident in the summer of 2016. This event changed the course of Tyler's life. He sustained severe brain trauma and now resides in a long-term care facility. Tyler's kindness and humor have touched many and his passion for athletics was evident in all he did. He was a three-sport athlete competing for the Noble Squires football team, the Noble Middle School's basketball and track team. Tyler was a leader, whether it be in the classroom, on the court, or on the field. An example of a truly outstanding student athlete. This year, the Tyler Brisson Scholarship is awarded to Riley Pomelo, who exemplifies Tyler's values of hard work, leadership, dedication, and heart. She has played soccer and lacrosse for the past four years of high school and has been captain senior year in soccer and captain for lacrosse both junior and senior year. She is part of the early childhood education as a vocational student <clears throat> and a head teacher in the Kindergarten Jumpstart program. She plans on joining a soccer club and a lacrosse team in college to keep up with her abilities and meet other athletes that are as passionate about sports as she is. Riley, both Tyler's mom, Melissa Jean, and her family hope that this scholarship will help to keep Tyler's dedication to sports and leadership alive as you continue your academic journey. Congratulations. Next, we have the American Legion Good Citizenship Awards, and these are very fancy awards. You get a medal, and you also get this very fancy certificate, which says, this particular student of Noble High School in recognition of the accomplishment attained as a winner of the American Legion Citizenship Award and in further recognition of the possession of those high qualities of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship and service necessary to the preservation and protection of the fundamental institutions of our nation and the advancement of society. We have three students who are receiving this award. Charles Jamie George. <laughs> Josephine Stapleton. Come on down if I'm calling your name. And Corey Yorick. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Finley, who is going to be presenting the Main Principals Award. And he has it, okay. <laughs> I was panicking. I, I didn't lose it. Um, the Melmac Principal Scholarship is awarded to a student who has made a difference in the lives of others and that of uh, his or her community. They are also a solid sc school citizen involved in extracurricular activities and exhibit a commitment to public service. This year's $2,000 Melmac Principal Scholarship goes to Amelia Weatherby. Next, we have Mr. Parr and Ms. Guzman Rothwell giving out the SEAL endorsements. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mard. The SEAL endorsement program and the STEM endorsement program are both programs that were designed to give students a uh, choice about how they pursue their secondary school education. Students who complete the SEAL endorsement program specialize in social studies, English, uh, arts, or language. And uh, they have to earn uh, grades uh, at, at a high level in order to achieve the diploma endorsement. They also need to pursue their interest outside of school and uh, ensure that they are really displaying that they are willing and dedicated to the particular area they've chosen to study for the SEAL endorsement. This evening we're pleased to present several, and the first goes to Lucas Bent. Our next recipient of the SEAL Diploma Endorsement is Megan O'Connor. Next we have Jacob Hamill. And we're pleased to also honor Emily Lowry. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. And next we have Mr. Adam Reed, who will be giving out the SEAL endorsement award, uh, STEM endorsement awards. Good evening. I'd like to recognize the following students for their outstanding work in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math for their uh, coursework that has gone above and beyond the regular requirements. Lucas Bent. Rain Bugatta. Ireland. Thank you. All righty. Next, we have the Presidential Education Awards. Each year, the President of the United States sends certificates to all students who have earned a GPA of 3.5 or higher. So we have those certificates that we will be getting out to you. Um, I am going to read a letter from President Biden, and then I am going to read a list of students that have a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Congratulations on receiving the 2021 President's Education Award. America is a country where we are one and unite through tough times. You are the future leaders of this great nation, and through your de determination and resilience to push forward, you have reached this ultimate accomplishment of being recognized for this prestigious award. Dr. Biden and I are pleased to congratulate you on receiving the 2021 President's Education Award. We are honored to join your family, friends, school, and community in celebrating your wonderful achievement. Jill and I send our best wishes and blessings. Keep challenging yourself, be kind, and while we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, be sure to wear a mask. Joe Biden. And so, the students I'm going to read now 
um, are not getting any additional awards this evening. If you think you have a GPA of 3.5 or higher and I don't call your name, don't panic. It's going to be in your packet of other things. So just hold on. So I'm going to have you students stand and remain standing, all with a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Kiri Aham, <laughs> Abigail Albert, Lucas Bent, Rain Bugato, Deja Casey, Kalean Cashel, Caitlin Clapper, Kyra Franey, Charles George, Jacob Hamill, Christopher Leon, Kelsey Libby, Emily Lowry, Jacqueline McAvoy, Emma McLaughlin, Ryan Mentor, Megan O'Connor, Harley Pepin, Riley Pomerlo, Josephine Stapleton, Casey Yurick, Corey Yurick, and Amelia Weatherby. Congratulations to all of you. You may be seated. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Zerilli and Mr. Lounsbury, and they will be giving out additional scholarships and awards. Remember to hold on to this stuff. Hi, I'm Ms. Cirilli. Um, I'm going to be saying names, and then Mr. Lounsbury is going to be handing out the awards and scholarships. So if Lucas Bent could come up to the stage. <laughs> Lucas is getting the Presidential Education Award, the Kennebunk Savings Bank Scholarship for $1,000, the Zachary W. Wentworth Memorial Scholarship for $500, and the Sullivan Berwick Alumni Association Scholarship for 90% of interest. And Lucas Bent will be going to the University of Maine at Orno. Uh, next to the stage, we have Rain Bugato. Rain will be getting the Presidential Education Award and we'll also be getting the Sullivan Berwick Alumni Association Scholarship for 90% of interest, and Rain will be attending the University of New Hampshire at Durham. <laughs> Next to the stage, we have Emily Dumont. Emily will be receiving the David R. Vetter Memorial Scholarship for $500. And she will be attending the Academy of Medical Professions. And next up to the stage, we have Victoria XL, Tori. Uh, she will be receiving the Carlotta E. Kobe Scholarship for $200 the Carlton R. Boston Scholarship for $200, the Donald R. Folsom Scholarship Fund for $500, and the Elliot G. Gray Family Scholarship for $500. And she will be going to Husson University. And now I'm gonna switch it up and give it to Mr. Lounsbury. Okay, everybody, we got Jamie Marquis up, please. Glasses would help. Jamie is receiving the $500 Denise Abbott Memorial Scholarship, the $1,000 MSAD60 Teachers Association Futures and Education Scholarship. Do not leave, thank you. The $500 Pat and Sco Johnson Honor 500 Pat and Sco Johnson Honorary Scholarship, and the 500 Specialty Services Scholarship. And Jamie will be attending the New University of New Hampshire in the fall. <laughs> Jacqueline Jackie McAvoy.
Jackie is receiving the Presidential Education Award. The 250 Berwick Youth Soccer Association Scholarship. The 5,000, yes I said 5,000, Dr. William E. Light and Carol B. Light Scholarship. The $1,670 Elroy and Lori Day Give a Lift Scholarship. And the 2,000 Wentworth Douglas Hospital, Hospital Auxiliary Scholarship. And hopefully all this money will help her fly out to the Hawaii Pacific University in the fall. Megan O'Connor. <laughs> Megan is receiving the Presidential Education Award, the $500 Clark Clement Scholarship, the $250 Sanford Kiwanis Scholarship, and the $300 Stephen Philbrick Scholarship, and Megan will be attending Syracuse University. Riley Parmelo. <laughs> Riley is receiving the Presidential Education Award, the $300 Fred F. Field Memorial Scholarship, the $100 Noble 50 Plus Club Scholarship, the $1,000 Partner Bank Scholarship, the $500 Savannah Picard Scholarship, and the $500 the Lavasser Family Scholarship, and Riley will be attending the University of West Florida. <laughs> and to conclude our activities, Ms. Samar. No, well, oh. yeah, okay. okay thank, you. thank you. So, Mr. Parr, are you here? I am. He wants to come back up here. Thank you. Apologize that you have to listen to me again, but uh, just through some sort of slip up, we managed to leave uh, one of our honorees off our certificate list, and I don't want to let that go uh, without acknowledging that we have one more SEAL recipient. Uh, Ryan Mentor, if you could stand and be recognized for your achievement, please. I apologize, uh, and we will get your certificate to you as soon as possible, Ryan, congratulations. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our festivities for the evening. Thank you so much for coming. Congratulations to all of the students. Have a wonderful evening and drive safely.